Hello and welcome to Blender and a bad green screen. So I've got a pretty atrocious green screen set up here. Let's pop into Blender and see if we can fix it. Okay so we've loaded up Blender and strangely enough the first thing we're going to do is save it as green screen screen tutorial. We're saving this in the same folder as the videos we're using and so if we do this it means that all the file names will be rel relative and we can move the entire project from one hard drive to another without anything bad happening. So after that we're going to open up the node editor, we're going to go to compositing nodes, tick the three tick boxes and I'm going to hold shift and drag downwards and alt, um, shift A, add output viewer, viewer there and we're going to delete that and shift A add input movie clip drag connect open green screen which is what I happen to call the clip and there I've appeared and I realize one weird thing about this tutorial is I'm going to be staring at my face the whole time I'm going to press V a few times so we've got the entire image on screen and now we're going to actually see what we can do with keying out this this wrinkly horrible green screen uh, so well the first thing we might try would be to look at the keying option a purpose-built keying screen and we can select the key color and go to we'll go for something in the middle so around there and it's not too bad i mean we can always look at this if press this we get to see um, the transparency map of the file with the of the video and we can see that it's really well I'm just going to delete that and we'll go back to there this time we're going to add a color key connect it up whoops and again we'll go for something somewhere in the middle now this color key uses hue, saturation and value and these are a way of mixing any color ever. So I'm just going to pop the, bring this up and we can see how they work here. So if the hue is, I think this color wheel explains it quite well actually. Hue is the position round the color wheel. This is the color that we're mixing here. Uh, or the color, the position in the rainbow would be, also be a good way to describe it. Saturation is well, it's the dis difference between it being really, really bright and grey. And value is, well, if you put it down to all the way, it goes to black. And if you put it up all the way, we either have an incredibly bright version of the colour, or if saturation is down, it goes to white. So, well, the Q saturation and value here, I'm just going to delete that, they're actually tolerances. So, I mean, if we turn value up and we can see this is coming towards what we want straight away, it's kind of ignoring how dark the color is. It's just paying attention to where it is on the rainbow and how saturated it is. So well, I'm going to turn off, I'm going to make it no longer care about how saturated it is. And I'm going to turn this up. I mean, though, uh, although the folds will get darker and lighter, they won't really change how where they are on the rainbow that much. So I'm just going to turn that up until all, ev everything, everything green has been cut away. And then I'm going to turn this down till some of what's left of my hair appears again. And I'm going to do the same for value to get the right point. And so we actually, well, there's a bit of a... Uh, we can see down here there's a bit of green remaining which I've managed to for some reason looks a bit more blue there we've actually managed to get a pretty good cut out now the only thing with it is it's completely digital things are either transparent or they're opaque there is no semi-transparency which we should be getting around the edge of the hair and also if we go to this frame here which I carefully looked up before we should be getting some semi-transparency round this blur speed blur here so what can we do about what 
Well, first of all, I'm actually going to drag input into this bit here. And Matt, we're going to, uh, well, we're going to add a uh, converter set alpha and put the mat into there. Um, which has not actually changed anything, but will shortly. It means we can also go alt, alt, uh, shift A to add, as I said previously, uh, add a filter, a blur onto the mat, which is the mat is what, well, if we look at the mat on its own, we see the mat is, uh, this black and white image that shows which bits are transparent and which is aren't. So by blurring the mat, we could go to uh, 2020 and we have this sort of blurred edge round me, which really, quite frankly, does not work that well at all. Here is where we add keying again. Now I'll drag that here and I'm going to uh, control C, copy and control V, paste to copy the um, key colour in. Here, if we bring the mat to here, that mat, we will get this kind of um, spider's web. I'm actually going to bring this darker a bit. Another thing is rather than using this image here, if we put this keying output into here, which as you can see is going to the output, it it brings the green out of all the semi-transparent bits that are a bit green. Now this is actually looking a lot better now, but we still have some folds around my legs and around here and up here. I mean, here we'd be able to cut them out anyway, but the ones around my legs where my shadow would lie, well, my shadow does lie, would be causing all kinds of problems. So what we're going to do now is we're going to mix the mat here with the mat here using, as ever, a mix node. So mat into there, mat into there, and then the output goes into the set alpha. And we don't want a mix, we want a an overlay. And I'm just going to swap these two round like that. We're actually pretty much got it there. The way overlay transparency works, we take the first input. If it's entirely black, it will remain black. If it's entirely white, it will remain white. For the grey areas, it will start mixing in image 2, making it darker where image 2 is darker than mid-grey and making it lighter where image 2 is lighter than mid-grey. If you're using full colour images, it'll basically do this exact same process on the red, green and blue channels. All it remains to do is to cut out these bits here. So let's go into the movie clip editor. And if we click here, the uh, the video is already there as an option. And now we're just going to go to mask and I'm going to hold down control and go click. Just basically drawing a dotted line around this area that we don't want. And you must note that if we draw an imaginary last line here connecting the end of end to the beginning it will entirely cover up that area so that's that area covered up i'm now going to add another mask and i'm going to do the same with this one so right now we can go back to node editor I'm going to add a mask, which I'm going to search for because I can't remember which option it's in. And we've got a mask. I mean, we can view our mask and that's what it looks like. Oh, there's one thing I forgot to do. I need to uh, ramp. If I go to render buttons here, I need to turn that up all the way. And that's why that was appearing smaller. If I go back now, that's nice and full size. So there's another ingredient, that mask that we need to add to our node tree. I'm going to connect that back up there and I'm going to, bleh, that wasn't what I meant to do. Let's connect that back up there. I'm going to bring that down there and I'm going to add a converter, a math node. Uh, I'm going to stick it there. 
and connect the mask up and I want it to be a subtract. So it's now subtracting those areas from the mask layer. And yep, I believe that that is fixed.